Hallelujah. Once again, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We are tried or planned to keep the children in, in the church today, but um, it looks like they are used to their, <laughs> their church already. So we'll, we'll give them an opportunity to go to their church school and just rejoice and celebrate. Amen. Today is a day that is significant in our lives as believers and as children of God. And I want us to take this day, let's, let's make noise about today. You know, when the Irish, when they want to <laughs> celebrate St. Paddy's Day, you know how they go about wearing green, right? <laughs> I feel like every Easter we all should wear red or something, you know, or white or something, you know, because we have to be loud about this because this is it. This is it. I shared with us earlier, I said, there are other religions that their gods are dead. Amen. Their gods are dead. They are dead. In fact, their god is made of wood, of iron, or stone, and he can't speak, he can't hear, but we serve a living God. We serve a living God. He appeared unto many after his, re his resurrection, and last year, I went to verify. Amen. <laughs> I went to the Holy Sepulchre in Israel to verify <laughs> that truly he's not there. And I have good news. I didn't see him. <laughs> he's not there. I can tell you from Bible experience and from what my physical eyes have seen. I looked at the sepulchre. I saw where they laid his clothes. Nothing was there again because he's risen. He's risen. Hallelujah. So I'm very sure. I'm very sure of the God I serve. If God gives you the grace, please try to visit Israel. All the things you are reading in the Bible, once you see them, they will stick with you for life. I'm telling you, if God gives you the grace, put it on your bucket list when you are 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever age, or even to this year, if God gives you the privilege, just go and take a tour. Let them show you. You will see the stone, where the stone was. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you will see everything. You will see where he prayed through the night in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, my goodness. I still remember the garden. I have a picture of it on my phone. How he prayed all through the night. And many people think that when he was praying that the cup would not pass over him, many people think he went away from Peter, James, and John. No, it's a very small garden. The garden is not the size of this room. Maybe half of this room. But the burden in his heart made him pray through the night. And that's where it all started. Peter, James, and John were just a few feet away from him. It's a very small garden. The garden is still there. And when I saw it, I said, wow. When sleep hits, <laughs> it's hard to hear who is praying. But my focus this morning is that Jesus is alive. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not just telling you theory. I'm telling you practical. I saw him. I saw it. He's no longer in the grave. This morning, I want to share what I've captioned. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And we have a very long scriptural verse to read this morning. We want to read from Romans chapter 6. The entire chapter of Romans chapter 6. The entire chapter of Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to 23. Romans chapter 6. So let's get into it very quickly because I want to talk about I am redeemed. Romans chapter 6 from verse 1. Please pay attention. Um, I know we read in King James Version, but if you read in the English Standard Version of the Bible, you would gain a lot also from this scripture. But let's read the King James Version. Romans chapter 6, let's read. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, but like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, 
we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in, in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but a life unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield ye yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things thereof? Ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to share what I've captioned, I am redeemed. And why am I doing that? Because I want you to have an appreciation and know the benefits of redemption. I want you to know and appreciate what it means to be redeemed. Because it makes a whole difference when you know that you are redeemed. I'm going to be sharing with us what it really means, about eight things, what it means to be redeemed. Because redemption is the best thing that happened to any man. Redemption is the best thing that happened to mankind. When God created Adam and Eve, he gave him the best. But the devil came and stole that. And ever since then, Man was under the torture of Satan, under the torture of sin, under the affliction of the enemy. Man was being buffeted and assaulted by the devil for years. And Jesus, uh, and God, in his infinite mercy, looked at mankind and said, how long will these people suffer? How long will these people be in pain? How long will these people be under torment? And he sent Jesus Christ to pay the price to restore us back to where Adam was in the Garden of Eden. Adam was in the Garden and he was in dominion. He was on the earth as a god. He named all the animals and including the fishes in the sea. The fish can't come out of the sea because the fish will die. So Adam went into the sea and named the animals. The birds can fly down. They all flew down. And Adam named all of them. That man was immortal. That man was so powerful. That man had something in him called the life of God. When God formed him, God breathed into man the life. And that life made that man a superhuman. But the devil came and stole that. And for years, man suffered. 
the things that was afraid of man, man now became afraid of it. Did you know that the, the lion was in the garden and it never attacked Adam once? The antelope, the tigers, the leopards, they were all in the garden of Eden. They never attacked Adam once because they saw him as a god. But when sin happened, man now began to run from those things that used to run from him. So sin degenerated mankind to nothing. Sin made mankind dust. Sin reduced mankind lower than the level of animals. So that even animals could terrorize men. How do I know? When Daniel was thrown into the den of, de uh, 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 into the den of lions, the Bible says the lions had no power over him. Why? Because Daniel was living in the righteousness consciousness. The same consciousness that Adam had, that the lions could not hurt him, Daniel was also living in that consciousness. So when they threw him into, into the den of lions, the lion had no capacity over him. So Jesus came to take you and I to that level. Now, I'm not saying you go to Akron Zoo and jump into the den of lions. No, 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 no. That would be a terrible idea. I won't be there to, to help you. Amen. But I'm saying this, that when you have that righteousness, consciousness, you become superhuman. You begin to function like Adam. Ha! You say to one, go, it will go. You say to one, come, it will come. You restore, you receive all that the enemy has stolen from you. Jesus came to restore, to redeem mankind from the power of sin and hell. Interestingly, the price tag, what the devil stole, the devil stole it in one minute. When Jesus came to give it back to us, it took him three days. That is why it's easier to destroy than it is to build. When the, when the serpent came, it was a five-minute conversation. And Eve ate the fruit, gave to Adam. When Jesus came, he had to come, he had to go through pain, he had to die, and on the third day, he rose again. That was how great of a price that needed to be paid to get us back to where we were. In the Old Testament, they would offer, they would offer like sacrifice and burnt offerings. And they did that, but that was not enough. That was not sufficient. If you read through the Old Testament, you realize that any time that Israel sinned, they burnt sacrifice. They burnt a lamb, a goat, a, a calf. They did all kinds of things. That was temporal. God wanted something permanent. God wanted something once and for all. So God said, I will send my only begotten son. Because I love these people so much. They've almost killed all the animals on the earth. <laughs> I want to give them a once and for all sacrifice. So when Jesus came, he came and paid the price with his own blood, by his own volition, on his own. He came to pay the price to redeem us from the power of sin and of hell. Oh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 to 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 to 14. The Bible tells us of how the blood of goats and animals were used in the past. It said, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 13, it says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ephah, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, oh my God, without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The price was greater than the price of bulls. The price was greater than the price of goats. The price was greater than the price of animals. It was the price of the blood that was required. So understanding your redemptive right is the way to live triumphantly. 
if you truly understand your rights through the price that was paid, you will really live triumphantly. It's like somebody who has been given a, a blank check. If I come to you and say to you, go to the nearest dealership and pick a car for free. I walk up to you and say, hey, go to the nearest dealership. Pick any car of your choice for free. Tell me the truth. Would you pick a 1999 Dodge Camry? Be sincere. Would you be very modest and humble and go for the car that has been sold by another person? A, let's, a 2002 RAV4. Because you're a very modest person, you're a very humble person. But I told you, you can get any car. And you see a Lamborghini there. You see a Ferrari there. But you settle for a 2012 Ford Edge. You are shortchanging yourself. In the same way, Jesus paid the price for us. He paid the price and he opened us up to all the blessings. So if you are not taking the blessings, you are shortchanging yourself. What are these blessings? Give me Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. We read that this morning. We read that in our personal prayer. These are the things that Jesus died for. If you don't have any of this in your life, you are shortchanging yourself. You need to go and get it. You need to go and receive it. The Bible says, what is the lamb that was slain? To receive power and riches. Yes. Christ died so that we would not be poor. Christ died so that we would not be in poverty. So if you are living paycheck to paycheck, that's not God's plan. You need to reject it. You need to react. You need to revolt. You need to protest. And wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That blessing there is plural. And what is that blessing? It's eternal life. It is eternal life. So if you don't have any of these things in your life, or if you are not measuring at par, if you are not measuring to the level of that you need to be, then you need to react. You need to, you need to engage the forces of the Spirit to receive all that Christ has wrought for us. The price has been fully paid. The price, you cannot live in sickness as a child of God. You should not because he has paid for your strength. He has paid for your strength. He has paid for your vitality. Yes, you can. It's a big lie when they say that the way to, uh, people, people is a sickness that will kill a man. I think they say something like that. That, oh, there's got to be some sickness that will kill a man. No, that is not true. You can go to heaven peacefully, joyfully, and with strength. You can live your whole life without pain, without diseases, without afflictions, because the price has been paid for your total strength. The price has been paid for your total health. Don't mind them when they say that there are symptoms of aging. That, oh, this is happening because you are getting older. It's a lie. My Bible tells me that the man Moses was 120 years old. His eyes were not dim. Neither was his natural force abated. That means if Moses and Usain Bolt run 100 meters, Mo Moses will get there and will be whispering to Usain Bolt, tell him, come, more, come, come faster. At 120 years. So don't agree to anybody telling you, oh, your knees are not working well. It's because you are getting older. No! Jesus paid the price for my strength. Jesus paid the price. You can live in old age in perfect strength. Amen. I know an 80, 82, 83 year old man who still walks for hours on a prayer walk. Who still goes on a daily prayer walk. Who can still stand and minister for hours, who can still travel around the world at 82 or 83 this year. 
So don't buy the lie of society. Amen. When you look at your life, if any of these things here is missing, you need to challenge yourself. I must live in prosperity. I must live in strength. I must live in wisdom. I must live in glory. My life must be glorious. People must be envious of me. I must achieve great things. I must do big things. I must not settle for less because the price has been paid. If you, one of the things you should never tempt me with is anything good. Let's go back to that example. If you give me the permission and say go to the nearest dealership and take any car, I will come back with an helicopter. <laughs> I will come back with a helicopter. You don't tempt me with good things. I will not only ask for a car, I will ask them to combine the price of two cars and give me a helicopter. Because if the price has been paid, the one that can pay the price for any car in the parking lot, you can afford an helicopter. In the same way, Christ has died and paid the price for all of these things. We must live in them. Amen. We must live in them. We must live in them. So what does it mean to be redeemed? I said I'll give you eight points. What does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed is not an emblem. It's not a logo. It's not a sticky. You know those sticky children use when they play? You take one from the book you put on your body. Re to be redeemed is a status. It's a status. It's a state of being. It's not a logo. It's not an emblem. It's not just a name. It's a status. What does it mean? It means, number one, I am no more a sinner. I am no more a sinner. Sin is an act. Sinner is a person. When you are redeemed, you have translated from the realm of sin to righteousness. We saw all of that in Romans chapter 6 that we read this morning. Romans chapter 6, verse 7, verse 10, verse 17, verse 18, verse 22. He kept saying this, that if you are dead to sin, you are alive in Christ. Let's go back to that Romans chapter 6. Let's do Romans 6, 6, 7, 6, 10, 6, 17, 6.18, 6.22. Romans chapter 6. I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner. I am redeemed. I am not a sinner. You are not a sinner. When you are redeemed, you are no longer a sinner. When a child is born, he's no longer a fetus. Those are two different things. When a child comes out to the world, he's no longer a fetus. When he's in the womb, he's a fetus. But when he's born, he's no longer a fetus. He's a human being. He's a human. He's a person. He's a, he's, you, you, oh, glory to God. Romans 6, 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead, dead, is freed from sin. That is dead to sin. You are no longer bound by sin. Verse 10, Romans 6, 10. For he, in, in that he died, he died unto sin once. So when you die with Christ, you are dead to sin once and for all. You are no longer a sinner. Now somebody may say, what if I, I commit sin? That is two different things. Sinning is an act. Sinner is a person. You can be a saint and still commit sin. You can be a child of God and still commit sin. But you, are, you cannot be a child of God and be a sinner. No. It's impossible. It's impossible. Just like you cannot be male and female combined. Amen. You are either male or female. Amen. I am no more a sinner. Romans 6, give me verse 17. Romans 6, 17. Then we we'll do verse 18 and verse 22. He said, but God be thanked that ye who were servants of sin, you were in the past, you were servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. And verse 18, he says, being then made free from sin 
ye became the servant of righteousness. You were once a servant of sin. Now by the blood, you are now a servant of righteousness. You have been made free from sin. And verse 22, Romans 6, 22. The Bible says, now that you have been made free from sin, you have become servants of God. You have fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Being redeemed means I am no more a sinner. I am no more a sinner. I am not a sinner. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has saved me from the law of sin and death. Romans chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3. I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner. No, I am not a sinner. A sinner is a, is a status. Yes, Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. So don't let the devil condemn you that you're a sinner. Yes, you made a mistake, but that doesn't make you a sinner. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. I am not a sinner. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. Woo. By the time I'm done with you, Today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will walk out of here as a roaring lion. You will walk out of here with full understanding. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. It says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and... Without spot, you have been redeemed, means you have been separated. You have become a new person. You have become a new identity. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Why am I spending time on this point? Because you need to know that you are not a sinner. Every curse on the sinner is not your lot. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new person. He's not a sinner. The old things are passed away. All things have become new. I am redeemed. It's not a logo. It's a status. It's a status that I am a new person. All things are passed away. You know, the devil is a trickster. He will try to remind you of who you were. You will see yourself dreaming of the past. You will see the things you did in the past, the guilt flashing before your eyes. I told you of a lady who came to me, I think this year. She said to me, oh, I want to confess of something I did 20 years ago. I said, 20 years ago? Okay, I'll give you some listening ears. So I invited her to my office. I said, tell me, what did you do? I said, is it illegal? She said, no, it wasn't illegal. What did you do? What did she do? She spanked her nephew. 20 years ago. <laughs> she spanked her nephew 20 years ago. I'm telling you the truth. It happened in my office here. 20 years ago, she spanked her nephew. And she has been living with the guilt of that. I said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what, what is the meaning of this? 20 years ago, you spanked your nephew that was a child. <laughs> you, are still, you still want to confess. I'm like, is there any other confession apart from that? You know? The guilt, the condemnation for 20 years. I'm telling you, when you are redeemed, there are some things the devil will bring to you. Tell the devil, forget about it. That is gone. That is not me. That is not me. That is not me. I'm redeemed. I'm a new person. I'm a new person. For 20 years, for spanking a nephew, a, a sister's child. She said, oh, oh, I feel like it's the cause of my pain. I'm like, what's happening here? What other confessions? <laughs> that was the only thing she has. I'm like, come on now. So many people live under that kind of guilt, under that kind of 
that condemnation. He said she didn't treat the child well. She spanked him. I'm like, no, 20 years ago. Just, are, are you saved? Are you redeemed? If you are redeemed, those things are gone. I mean, the spanking we're even talking about. Come on now. That's even scriptural. Amen. <laughs> I didn't go to that level, but if I wanted to, I could have done that. So you are not a sinner anymore. You are a child of God. You need to live in that consciousness. Live in that reality. Live with that mentality. Because your status has changed. Praise God. And similar to that, number two, I am redeemed means I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I did it in the past. Yes, it was me. But I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. I have been forgiven. Yes, it was me. Do you know that Abraham is not the father of Ishmael? Yes, Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. Abraham was the father of Ishmael. <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> I got you there. Abraham was not the father of Ishmael. Abraham was the father of Ishmael. It's two different things. It's two different people. He did it when he had, his name was Abraham, he had Ishmael. When his name was Abraham, then he had Isaac. <laughs> oh, talk about forgiveness. And God called him my friend. Abraham, my friend. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. If God does not forgive sins, I should not be holding the microphone today. If God does not forgive people, I am not qualified to stand before you today. Amen. I'm standing because here today because I know I have been forgiven. There are some things I did when I was younger that I, I could keep on knocking myself in the head for doing them. Yeah. There are some ladies I jilted. I entered the relationship. I knew that I was not in need for marriage. There are some hearts I broke. When I was ignoramus and ignoramus, I didn't know better. So if Christ does not forgive, I will still be living under that bondage. Oh, I did this, I did that. But hallelujah, I'm forgiven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you are forgiven. Hallelujah, your sins are blotted out. In whom we have redemption through his blood. His blood brought us the forgiveness that we needed. So we are forgiven. God does not hold grudges against us anymore. Amen. God does not have a book or a fire where he stores our sins. When you are redeemed, you are forgiven. Amen. And those things are gone. So if God has forgiven you, you must forgive yourself. You must forgive yourself. I'm telling you today, God has sent me to liberate men. And one of the key he gave to me was forgiveness. When you look at that, Act 26 verse, 20, 26, verse 18. To open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And their inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith, that is in me. You are forgiven. Don't live under the condemnation. Don't live under the guilt. Don't live under the shame. I am redeemed, you are redeemed, it means you are forgiven. You are forgiven. You must forgive yourself. The past is past, let it pass. The past is past, let it pass. I don't care if your past was yesterday, Saturday. Amen. As you give your heart to Jesus today, it is past. And so let it pass. Let it pass away. I am redeemed means... I am forgiven. Number three, I am redeemed means I've been bought with a price. I've been bought with a price. I no longer have a price tag. I no longer have a price tag. I've been bought with a price. What does that mean to be bought with a price? I am not cheap. I am valuable. I am special. The price for me can only be afforded by one person. 
and he paid the price. So I'm no longer available. I'm not available for sickness. I'm no longer available for temptations. I'm no longer, I'm no longer available for sin. I have been bought with a price. I've been bought. I've been bought. My allegiance has been sold to Christ. He, bought, he paid the price for me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20, he says, I believe from verse 19, he says, Know you not. Go to verse 19 first. He said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? And then verse 20 says, For ye are brought, bought with a price. I've been bought with a price. I've been bought with a price. My allegiance has been bought with a price. My loyalty has been bought with a price. My, 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 my commitment has been bought with a Christ, with a price. And the price was the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been bought with a price. So therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, which are God's. Number four, what does it mean to be redeemed? It means I now belong to God. I now belong to God. I am now a property of God. I am now a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. I am now a child. A slave does not have his own will. A slave does not have a future. A slave does not have an opinion. A child has authority. I am no longer a slave. I am a child of God because I now belong to him. I now carry his name. I now carry his DNA. I now carry his identity. I now belong to him. I am his and he is mine. I, am, I now belong to God. <laughs> In the face of crisis, you need to tell the situation and circumstances. I will report you to my father. Amen. I will report you to my father. When the devil comes knocking on your way, when the devil comes with any kind of challenge, always tell him who your father is and he will bow for you. He will bow to you. I tell you, I have tried it in my life and it has worked for me. You have all heard my testimony 10 years ago exactly. 10 years ago, I was, I was stricken with unemployment. Stricken. It was like an affliction. Why do I say that? How do you apply for any job possible and you don't get one? How? With a master's degree, I applied to every job, including gas station attendance. I'm not berating that. If that is your job, praise God for you. I'm happy for you. But I just said, I applied to anything applicable. The one I was not qualified for, the ones I was qualified for, even the ones I was overqualified for. And I still got nothing. One day, this book came to my life. The book is titled Born to Win by Bishop David Oyedeko. And in that book, he said, I am a child of God. And he told me the things I'm telling you now. So I started to scream in my room, in my apartment, Satan, I will show you the son of who I am. I will show you the son of who I am. I'm a child of God. My father gives work. My father walketh. Either though I will walk, I will find employment. I began to scream. My neighbors came from downstairs, two of them, two ladies. They knocked on the door. They said, we had you talking to yourself. I said, no. <laughs> the people I'm talking to, they know themselves. <laughs> I said, no, don't worry. I'm not talking to myself. The people I'm talking to, they know themselves. <laughs> I said, no, don't worry. I said, I closed the door. I continued to say it. I took a giant piece of paper. I began, I wrote it. I am a child of God. I put it at the back of my door. I put it on my mirror. I am a child of God. God, I cannot be asking my father for meat and he will give me a serpent. I cannot ask him for bread and he will give me a stone. I began to confess. And my breakthrough began from there. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. It makes a difference. 
The child of the president cannot be treated like the child of a grocery store owner. You are a child of God. There are places that the child of Mr. President will get into that the child of a grocery store owner will not be able to access. You are a child of God. The child of the president lives in the White House. Lives there. Doesn't visit. No. Lives there. They have their own room. They didn't do anything to get it. They didn't even campaign. Look at the Obamas. Their, ch their children were babies. Babies. When he became president. They didn't even, probably didn't go to any campaign trail. But by virtue of who their father was, they got a room in the White House. Amen. They got a space there. They are not visitors. They are, they are residents there. That is where they live. That is where they do life. That's where they bring their friends. You are a child of God. And your father owns the heaven and the earth. Your father owns everything beneath it. It's a privilege. It's a right. It's a status. I am a child of God. I love how Tasha Cobb sang it. I'm no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God. You can't be a child and a slave at the same time. I'm a child of God. You are a child of God because you are redeemed. You are now, you now belong to God. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, Jesus gave a parable and then Apostle John explained that parable to us. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. Jesus said, except you are converted and you become a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you are converted, that is salvation. Salvation is what makes us a child of God. Unless you are converted and become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot become a child of God without being converted. But once you are converted, once you are, once you are redeemed, you become a child of God. That conversion there means redemption. When you are redeemed, you become a child of God. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, Apostle John explained that to us even further. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he says, For you little children are of God. You little children, you are of God. 1 John 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We explained that all through the month of January where we talked about I know who God says I am. You need to go back to those series of messages to hear that. Greater is he that is in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The spirit of lust, the spirit of anger, the spirit of malice, the spirit of accidents, suicide bombings that is in the world is small compared to the spirit of Christ that's working in you. Amen. And that's because you are a child of God. You can overcome. You overcome those things because he that is in you is greater than that. He that is in you is too much than that. So you are redeemed means I now belong to God. I now belong to God. Say with me, I am a child of God. Oh, I ca oh, you've got to say it like you mean it. You've got to say it like your life depends on it. Say it with me, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Woo! Let that sink in because it's powerful. I'm a child of God. I cannot be assaulted. I cannot be buffeted. God is my father. He takes full responsibility of me because I'm a child of God. That is what it means to be redeemed. When you are redeemed, you are a child. You are not a, you are not a slave. You are not a servant. You are a child. You are a child of God. Number five, what does it mean to be redeemed? Number five, it means I am seated with Christ. I am seated with Christ. 
To be seated with Christ means to be seated in authority. I am seated with Christ. When you are redeemed, you have authority. You know, God is in control of the heavens and the earth. But he has put the earth at the mercy of the redeemed. Amen. Yes. God has put the earth at the mercy of his children. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. God has given the earth to us, his children. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. It says, he has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. So we are to reign on this earth. We are to have dominion on this earth. We are to have it our way. You see, Burger King stole that from scriptures. Their logo is, have it your way, right? They stole it from scriptures. Because as children of God, we should have it our way. We should have it. We can say to things to stop and they will stop. We can say to things to start and they will start. Elijah was a man like like passion. Elijah stopped the rain from falling for three and a half years. One man that knew who he was. Joshua was a man like you and I. Joshua stopped the sun from setting. Command, spoke to the sun. Those guys were not even saved. Those guys only had the fear of God. They only had the spirit of God upon them. We have the spirit of God inside of us. Amen. So if they can speak to the sun, if they can speak to the elements, to, to rain, we also can do the same because we are seated with Christ in a position of authority. We are seated at the right hand of God with Christ. The right hand is a position of power, is a position of dominion, is a position of authority, is a position of, 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 of strength. I am redeemed means I am now seated with Christ. I am now in charge. God wants you to be in charge at your job. Amen. God wants you to be in charge in your, in your nation. God wants you to be in charge when you will say unto one thing, this is not going to happen on these streets. This is not going to happen at this job. This is not going to happen in this family. God wants you to be in charge. We have been redeemed as kings and priests to reign, not to suffer on the earth. We are to reign. We are to be in charge. When you are a king, everything is under your command. When you are a king, I happen to know a lot about royalty because my mother was born into a royal family. I happen to know a lot about that. There are some things, there are some places when I mention my grandfather's name, I don't have to say anything else. Of course, it's within that geographical location. But God has made us king on the earth. So it is not bound by geographical location. It is not just in America. It is not just in Asia. It is not just in Africa. It's anywhere on the earth. The name of Christ has given us royalty. We are kings. We are seated with him. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. We are still on number 5, and I will give us three more after this, and then we close. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. We are now seated with Christ. But God, which is rich in mercy, for his great love, Wherewith he has loved us. Even when we are dead in our sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And has raised us up together. And made us to sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. 
these heavenly places, the Bible says, is far above all principalities and all powers. You are seated with Christ. You are not seated with the scornful. You are seated with Christ. The place that is above the realm of the earth. Your control is from the heavens. You can control things on the earth because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 to verse 5. I am now seated with Christ. My office is in the heavenly places. I operate from above and not from beneath. Colossians 3, verse 3 to 5. It says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life is in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. And verse 5, it says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil consp- conspupience, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse 3 is my emphasis. Your life is in Christ and Christ and God. Nobody can take your life. Nobody can kill you. Nobody can bewitch you. Nobody can assassinate you because your life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. So before they can kill you, they will first kill God, then they will kill Christ, then they will find you. No stray bullet can hit you. You can't be a victim of Uh, what do they call it, mass shootings because your life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. Your life is hid. You know, hid means hidden, right? Is stored in Christ and Christ is stored in God. Your life is not available to be snipped off because you are redeemed. Because you are redeemed. I am now seated with Christ. Number four, uh, sorry, number what now? Number six. Number six. What does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed means I am restored. I am quickened. I am restored. I am quickened. I am quickened. I am restored. When you are redeemed, everything that you've lost will be given back to you. And I'm telling you, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I used to be very afraid. I mean, scared of the dark. I grew up with memories of when I want to go use the bathroom, my younger brother had to come with me. I grew up with that memory. I was not a child. I was, I was old enough, maybe like 11, 10, 11, 12. I was very afraid of the dark. But the day I gave my heart to Christ, oh my God, the kind of boldness that entered into me made me worried. <laughs> I was worried for myself. I was 100%. It was a 360 degree change. Everything I'd lost to fear was restored to me. That's why I tell you, even to today, I said, I don't look for trouble, but I don't run from trouble. <laughs> That boldness entered into me when I gave my heart to Christ. I don't look for your trouble, but if you look for my trouble, I will not run. I will fight you till I win you, I overcome you, I destroy you. That changed when I gave my heart to the Lord. So when you give your heart to the Lord, when you are redeemed, when you are a child of God, everything you lost will be restored to you. The joy will be restored to you. The peace will be restored to you. The opportunities will come back to you. The favor will restore to you. When you are redeemed, you are qualified for restoration. You are quickened. You are restored. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. I found this scripture many years ago. And I said to myself, I can never be sick. I can never be sick. Romans 8 verse 11. He says, if the same spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. 
when you have the same Holy Spirit, when you are born again and you are redeemed, you are saved, and the Spirit of God is inside of you, just like that Spirit rose Jesus Christ from the grave, it will quicken your mortal body. Whatever has been immortalized in your body, the Bible says, by redemption, it will be quickened. Whether it's your liver, whether it's your esophagus, whether it's your kidney, by redemption, they are quickened. They are quickened to life. What part of a part of your body has been dead? The Bible says, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken them. He will restore them. He will bring them back to life. So I am redeemed means I am restored. I am restored. And in the name of Jesus, God is restoring every of your losses, every of your everything that has cost you pain, everything that has cost you regret. God is restoring your days. The years the locust has eaten, the caterpillar, the canker worm, God is restoring them back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's hurry up to close. Number seven. What does it mean to be redeemed? When you are redeemed, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. I am redeemed means I am blessed. Redemption is not reduction. Redemption is not reduction. I am redeemed means I am blessed. You have the blessings of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. We are going to close very shortly. Let's finish up very quickly. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He has blessed us. We are blessed. Oh my goodness. Say with me, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Christ has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When you are blessed spiritually, you are also blessed here on the earth. And like we read in Revelation 5 verse 12, he has redeemed us to give to us blessings. Finally, number eight, what does it mean to be redeemed? It means I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. Whoever tries to curse me, the curse will go back on them. Amen. You need to live with this mentality. You will live triumphantly if you do so. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 19. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law because he has been made a curse for me. Mm? I cannot be cursed. A, I cannot be cursed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, be made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham may come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You are not, un, you are not cursable. You are not cursable. Please, that doesn't neg neglect. That doesn't neglect generational curses that you still need to fight. But as a redeemed, you are no longer cursable. The curse of the law, the curse of wickedness, the curse of the devil, those things can no longer affect you. God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, 
verse 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. He says, He that curses you, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You are uncursable because you are redeemed. Redemption covers you with the blood. Redemption covers you with the blood. It laminates you. It oils up your body. It protects your spirit, soul, and body by the blood. So you are you cannot be cursed. He that tries to curse you, God said he will curse the person. Amen. And he confirmed that in Numbers 23. That was 23. Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. He says, there shall be no enchantment against Jacob. Numbers 23 and verse 23. Numbers 23 and verse 23. There shall be no enchantment against Jacob, nor divination against, against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what had God wrought? Surely there is no enchantment against you. No weapon formed against you will prosper because you are redeemed. You are redeemed. You still need to fight the past, the curses of the past that may want to affect your future, but no new curse can come on you except the one that you bring to yourself. All right? So nobody can curse you. Let them try it. Let them do all kinds of things. You are now redeemed. It can't work. It can't prosper. It can't prosper because you are redeemed. I hope you know by now what it means to be redeemed. I hope you understand now what it means on a day like this when we celebrate redemption, when we celebrate resurrection. So the big question I have for you is this. Have you accepted this gift of redemption? Have you accepted the gift of eternal life? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Have you accepted this gift of redemption? The Bible calls it the gift of God. Ephesians 2 verse 8. The gift of God is eternal life. It's redemption. You want to walk in the reality of God's plans and purpose for your life? You must be saved to see that plan and purpose actualized. Yes, thank you. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God has a gift for you today. Will you receive it? Have you received it? Do you want to receive it now? It is a gift. It is a gift from God. If you are under the sound of my voice today, whether on site or online, and you want to receive this gift of God, you want to be born again, you want to be saved, you want to be a child of God, you want to start afresh with God. Please rise up on your feet. If you want to do that, this moment, don't be shy. Don't be discouraged. If you are online, stop whatever you are doing and stand up. Except if you are driving or if you are in a place where you can't stand, that's okay. But anyone that wants to give their hearts to Jesus, this is another opportunity to do so. This may be the last opportunity to do so. So don't play with this. Don't joke with this. Don't procrastinate. This may be the last chance to do so. When Noah built the ark, the people were laughing at him. They were mocking at him. Noah told them it was going to rain. Noah told them it was going to flood. They thought it was a lie. They said, oh, it has never rained on the earth. He doesn't know what he's saying. They were mocking him. One man single-handedly built the ark. After he built the ark, he took animals and was putting them in. People were just watching, watching, watching. They took no action. They kept procrastinating. Noah brought all the animals. And then God shut the door. When God shut the door, the floods came. That's when they now started running the altar skelter. In the same way, you may have had an altar call before and you have done nothing. 
God is giving you another chance. Because when he locks the door, the Bible says he can shut and no man will open. He can shut the door and no man will open. When he shuts the door, there will be no opportunity for repentance. This time I'm saying right now will never happen again. So today I want you to take advantage of this call. Don't play. Don't procrastinate. The door can be shut soon. If you are already standing, or maybe you want to give your heart to the Lord. You want to renew your commitment to the Lord. Maybe you were once saved and something happened and you went back and today you want to return back to the Lord. You have had the word of the Lord and it has burned your heart. It has pricked your heart. Please, I want to encourage you to also to stand up. I want to encourage you to stand up. Jesus is happy to have you back. Jesus is happy to save you back. You want to start a new walk with God. You want to forget the past. Now you want to start anew. You want to start afresh. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is calling. Would you answer the call now? In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are in any of the two categories, please bow your heads. Close your eyes. And say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. Just the way I am. I am a sinner, and I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me with your blood and make me your child. I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. I am no longer a sinner. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Please keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed as I pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this day for these ones that you have brought to yourself. Maybe for the first time, or maybe yet another time. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for this second opportunity, or this first opportunity that you have given to them. Lord, I pray that your grace that has brought them forward will keep them in you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus, that these ones will never go back to sin. These ones will never be weary. These ones will never faint. These ones will step up and step in and press in into you forever. They will explore all the great things and the destinies you have put into them. Father, thank you because the hold of shame, the hold of guilt, the hold of sin is broken over their lives. Thank you for a brand new name, for a brand new status, for a brand new life. The old things have passed away and all things have become new. Father, thank you because when you come to take us all home, all of our garments shall be white as snow. Hey, and we shall be ready and rapturable with you, my Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah let's put those hands together for jesus please you may be seated god bless you what a joy what a privilege what a honor my brother i'm very happy to see you back in the house of the lord this is where you belong this is where you belong there is a prophecy over your life that can only be, only be fulfilled where you are in the house of the lord i missed you daily i've tried to call but you have been busy. But I'm glad that you are here today. And I'm glad God has given you a new beginning. You are welcome here. This is your father's house. This is the house of God. So we would like to see you some more. And for anyone who gave their heart to Jesus or who rededicated their lives to Jesus, please connect with us. This is your father's house. Let's see you there often. Let's, don't be a stranger. Don't be a visitor 
in your own father's house. Come be a part of what God is doing here and your life will be changed forever. Or you can send us a message also and let us know you made this informed decision today to accept the Lord Jesus into your life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You can send us a message on any of our social media platforms for those watching online. Or you can send us an email at newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive forever. Amen. Let's rejoice because he lives. We shall live also. Because you live, Jesus, I live. Do we know that song? I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to praise your name. You paid the price, the highest price. I'm so grateful for your love. You took my place, <laughs> and now I stand to be called your only own because you live. Jesus, I live. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to praise your name. Hallelujah. It's my favorite holiday. It's my favorite. Oh, man, I love this month on Christmas. I love this month on my birthday. Amen. So permit me for that uh, birthday behavior. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just excited. You know, my father's house is a house of Muslims. And I saw them suffering. I saw them suffering. I saw them suffering. As a little boy, Jesus was introduced to me. And I went to my grandfather. I was maybe, maybe five or six. I told him, I said, you must be born again. I saw how suffering they lived. I saw how they were rotting in sickness and ignorance and poverty. And I said, no. I went to him. You must be born again. He chased me away. He said, this little boy, you don't know what you're saying. I saw him reading the Bible, but he was still smoking. And I, ever since then, I made it up in my mind. I said, this man, my grandfather must be saved. And I saw my other cousins. I saw them even up till 2021 during COVID. They couldn't afford the basic needs of life. I said to one of them, I said, you must be saved. I told him, I said, look at our lineage. Everyone that is not a Christian, see their quality of life. Open your eyes. I told the young man. I said, open your eyes. Be smart. Don't be stupid. Be saved. Look at our lineage. Whoever has done anything well, tell me one Muslim that has done one thing well in our lineage, in our generation. Tell me one. I challenged him. He said, oh, uh, brother, you know, we are all serving the same God. I said, no, we are not serving the same God. What are you talking about? I said, you must be born again. I said, if you want to do great things, you are 19 or 20 now, be saved. He came back to me one year later. He said he has thought about it. And now he wants to be saved. So I led him to Christ over the phone. I changed his name. I said, you will no longer be called Ibrahim. You will now be called Abraham. I said, you will no longer be. Sorry, I gave him Michael. Michael was the name I gave him. You are no longer going to be Ibrahim. You will now be Michael from today. And I prayed over him, and his life has been upgrading. Those people that used to call you for money, give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. When my grandmother, my grandmother was the one that died without being saved, and it hurts till today. My grandfather, I heard, gave his life to Christ on his deathbed. That made me rejoice. They changed his name also to David. 
But my grandmother died, and um, a Muslim. I was pained. When they called us to Nigeria for a funeral, and people were dancing, you know, in Nigeria we party a lot. You know, they were partying. On that dance floor, I made a vow to the Lord. I said, there is no member of my lineage, no member of my family that will die without giving their hearts to Jesus. I made a vow. Because people were just dancing. Somebody that is going to hell. I'm sure most of us that were dancing there, none of us told about Christ. So when I'm talking about redemption and Easter, it's with joy. I know the difference. I know what my life was before. When I started college, I had only four shirts. Four shirts. It was not enough for the whole week. So I will, wa- I will wear one Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, I have to wash those two so I can wear them on Friday and Saturday. I know the difference Amen. that redemption has brought for me. That was the level of poverty. So, all right. Why am I saying all of this? We're supposed to close the service. I'm just excited at Easter. I'm just excited that I'm saved. I've seen the difference it has made in my life and in the life of others. And I'm proud to say that I belong to Jesus. (laughs) Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure you've not seen this side of me before. Uh, That's because you've not seen me on Easter Sunday. Amen. I've been spraying and spending and praising like it was me that that rose from the dead. (laughs) Hallelujah. Because Christ in me is the hope of glory. Let's rise up as we close. Apologize for that extra five minutes of, uh, I don't know what to call it, testimony. But to be saved is to be saved. Trust me. Trust me. And all of us that are saved, we are at an advantage. Let's lift up our hands one more time and say thank you to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for the translation. Thank you for the change of levels. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Blessed be your name. Please, I want you to go with this fire today and tell somebody about Jesus. Tell them the man that saved your soul. Tell them the man that changed your story. Tell them the man that turned things around for you. Tell them about Jesus. Lord, we ask for grace to share Jesus with somebody today through social media, through electronic media, in person. Lord, in every opportunity you bring our way. Thank you, precious Father. And because you live, our tomorrow shall be great and all right. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you sit down one second, please? Just sit down very briefly. We're going to close. I want to emphasize the announcements that uh, uh, we made today. Please just sit down with me. I promise two minutes and we'll, we'll, we'll stand up and close. Amen. All right. Don't forget tomorrow we're going to be praying from 6.30. 6.30 tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. If you like to pray, if you like to to, to fellowship, please let's come together and let us pray together. We are entering the new month with prayer. And I tell you, it's going to be a turnaround month for us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Also wanted to emphasize, the spring hike is the first of its kind. Um, we had a quick conversation last week, Sunday, uh, with my brother, DeVue, here. Um, so we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk some more about what's going to be like the, the trail we'll go through. Uh, if you are walking or if you have a bicycle, you can bring that. Um, please don't, don't break the bank to buy a bicycle if you don't have one. We can walk through the hikes. We'll communicate the details uh, with, with the church when we have more details. But it's for Saturday, the 20th of April. Saturday, the 20th of April. The weather is going to be about 60 degrees. So we need to, we'll give you guys more information about that. And for the weekend breakfast prayer that's going to be on site in May, the first Saturday in the month of May, it's going to be the breakfast family prayer here at 9 o'clock. All right? So to be a true breakfast family prayer, because we have breakfast, and uh, it's going to be the first time in almost three years that we're having it in person. Don't miss it for anything. And of course, this Saturday, if you have some time, please come and join us at 12 p.m. Uh, We're going to be painting. Take out those drips, paint this wall. 
and then we're going to spot clean the carpets. We were going to do that the last time, but the, the machine didn't work. The carpet cleaner didn't work. So we're going to fix that this coming Saturday at 12 p.m. So if you have uh, good painting skills, if you have a hobby for cleaning, you can join us and invite your friends also. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and close. Father, thank you again. Let's stand up. Father, thank you again for today. Thank you for your death on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your resurrection. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray for every one of us that every day of this week is blessed for us. It shall bring forth fruit and not tongues. Blessings are not curses. For every day of this week are the days the Lord has made. Therefore, you and I and all our family members, friends, and loved ones shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is well with us, and we are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. God bless you. Happy Easter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for listening to today's message. We know you have been blessed. So for more of these messages, please visit us on our website at www.thola.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel at THOLA TV. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at THOLA underscore church. God bless you and keep on shining. Changing